just the Lake Moonsault. But it wasn't real impactful. I mean, for uh, for a 230-pound guy that looks like he's 210 and no one even believed that he's 230, <laughs> most people, you know, a lot of wrestlers uh, might add a few pounds to, to their billing. For me, it, it's usually taking pounds away because I'm a lot heavier than I look because I'm solid, my legs are big. Um, I weighed 250 when my knee went out. No one would believe that I weighed 250. They would bill me as 225. But anyway, hitting that split leg moonsault um, out of the corner wasn't real impactful to beat like really big guys. And Ron Slinker, the same guy that got me my job with WCW back in uh, 92 with uh, Bill Watts, the same guy that gave me the name Rob Van Dam and Robbie V, he said, you need something with more impact. So I said, fuck, you know, how... What can, what can be more impactful than me jumping off the top rope as high as I possibly can and bringing all of my weight down, crashing onto my opponent? So a lot of people do the splash. That's been done for years and years. I used to watch the Tonga Kid do it when I was a fan back in the day. So I wanted to do it a little different. I used to jump up in the air and I would do a bridge because uh, I'm flexible, and I would arch way back in the air and be real pretty. Uh, when I came down, swam. I broke my wrist one time in a match with Stevie Rich was doing that. So I just turned it into a frog splash, bringing my elbows and knees more together. Instead of uh, arching back, I, I more I ball forward a little bit more. And, and then to make it original, I started spinning. And, and you know, eventually, once I got used to the WWE ring and in the ECW ring before that, I could hit my opponent from anywhere in the ring, from any corner, and I could spin uh, left, right, 180 degrees, whatever. That's something that uh, nobody else uh, seems to do when they hit that splash. Great stuff, great stuff. That was unbelievable. You know, getting the opportunity just to see you do that move, and I still remember to uh, this every day and different things. Uh, you know, you talk about your friends and uh, ECW and different things, and I guess you are going to get to see them on your new radio show that you have on Blog Talk right now. It's called RVD Radio. What's the URL for that thing? Um, I guess it's blogtalkradio.com slash RVD Radio. I usually, uh, when I got to go to my profile page to, uh, to sign up, uh, when I get ready to do the show, I just Google RVD Radio. I Google RVD Radio and it pops up. You can reach it off of my MySpace, which is MySpace slash Five Star Comics. And the new improved uh, website with the makeover that'll be that'll be up in the next uh, few days, that will also have access to RVD Radio. We just had episode number 10. I've been doing it every Wednesday. Lots of fun, lots of fun. It's topical because um, I talk about topics. Just like this is a big inspiration, by the way, for RVD TV. Um, I felt a little bit uh, almost trapped when I wanted out of WWE. I felt like my, my life seems, not, I don't want to say meaningless, but the routine of driving two, three hundred miles a day to go to a town that I don't even fucking want to be in when I'm just thinking about, wow, it's sunny and 80 degrees back in California. I wish I was at the beach, but instead... I'm driving to Wisconsin in this fucking snow. <laughs> Why? So I can get to the, you know, get to the building and do the same thing I do every day, you know, and stretch and go out there and wrestle, you know, and, and deal with. And some of the guys are assholes. Some of the guys I really don't care for. And then you hear the fans that that, that are fooled because they don't know what assholes these people are, you know. And so they're out there buying their shirts and stuff. And hey, what do you think of this guy, Rob? And it's just like. And it, it just, after a while, I mean, it just got to be like so much. And what I really wanted to do was to uh, get away from the ring, and I wanted to explore, uh, I wanted to explore my thought process. Uh, part of my real life is having conversations every day, every day with people that are, that are deep and thought-provoking. It's just something that I do. Whenever I get with my dad, I notice that we're talking about how the universe was formed and about God. Okay, well, if God was there first, well, who created God? You know, we just we get into these conversations, and 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 that was an inspiration behind RVD TV. When I I said I want to do this, I want to film it. I want to get friends that are celebrities, you know, like uh, actors, comedians, wrestlers, uh, musicians, whatever people that live here in LA, and talk about shit like that. So on RVD TV, we talked about gun control, language censorship, God, death penalty, um, tons of it. I have so much fun with that. RVD Radio is basically like an extension of that. I pick a topic or two, 
And uh, I do a two-hour show. It started being an hour, and an hour was just too damn short. Now we do two hours. And to be honest, two hours flies by. Everyone at the end is like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's over so quick. But I don't think I'm going to go longer than two hours. But Wednesdays, it's um, 6 to 8 p.m. on the West Coast. So that's like 9 to 11 on the East Coast at RVD Radio. Just had a 10th uh, episode, like I said. And, um, yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of my ECW friends are, have been on. This, this Wednesday, a couple of days ago, I had uh, Sabu, Fonzie, um, Kid Cash was on there, uh, Chris Masters. Um, and, and you know it's that's that's like a normal week to have like uh, several wrestlers all call in like on the same show and we all talk to each other. Right. We take callers and we talk to them. Uh, Hurricane uh, Gregory Helms was on uh, last week, and um, it's a lot of fun. Next Wednesday, um, I got a very special topic on RVD Radio because uh, Wednesday the seventeenth of December is. Sonya is going to get disconnected from her final chemo uh, infusion. Big, big news here in the Van Dam household because she's she's gone through uh, just about six months of uh, chemo yeah. treatment, which we have not enjoyed. And Wednesday is the finish line. She will get disconnected. Uh, she'll be done with that. We'll be ready to get on with you know with a whole new chapter in her life. So Wednesday. Uh, after her disconnect, when we get on the radio, Wednesday night, RVD Radio, that's one of the things we're going to be talking about is cancer. I want to hear from people calling in, sharing their stories, and and uh, to balance that with, you know, to make sure we got um, uh, some positive stuff to talk about, I also want to hear about survivor stories. I, I mentioned last week, I said, uh, we want to hear you next week if you survived a train crash or car crash, whatever, and Sabu already said he's going to be calling in Wednesday to share some stories of his. Um, I lost my mother to cancer, so I know exactly, you know, what people go through and everything. And uh, you know, I do wish, that. I do wish uh, you and your family all the best. I, I watched my mother suffer in the living room and die. Uh, and cancer just, you know, takes over your entire body and just shuts you down. And it's very fortunate that your wife was able to survive. And I do wish you all the best. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, it, it's. I'll tell you, when when we got diagnosed, we could not have been any more in the dark. We didn't know anything about cancer. It was something that happened to other people. Totally not, not ready for it to come into our lives. And now it's amazing, like, were, were we sleeping? I mean, how did we not know that this is, affects so many fucking people? I mean, there's so many people that tell me, just like you did, about their personal experiences with it. And according to statistics... Here in our country, in the United States, one out of two men will get cancer. One out of three women. That is fucking ridiculous. I mean, that's not something that happens to other people. That's one out of two, one out of three. That's us or our friend or our brother or sister or our loved ones. That's And, you know, it's, it's something that I know someday we'll look back at. I don't know if it will be in our lifetime or not, but people will look back and go, huh. <laughs> Man, remember when people used to die of cancer? That's how it's going to be because we'll get past it. You know, just like now we look back at, at the plagues, you know, from uh, the turn of the century that used to kill people. And we think, you know, we think it's so ridiculous, uh, you know, before penicillin was invented. You know, we can look back and say, wow, can you believe people used to live only to be 30 years old? And, and we're just, you know, we're just somewhere on that path right now. It's unbelievable. And, you know, personally, I think that the government, has the cure for cancer, but they're making too, too much money. They're they're making too much money off the fucking stuff they're putting out to uh, deaden the the severity of cancer. They just don't want to release the cure. You know, you you're absolutely right. Which gets into the whole evil um, agenda and basis for not just for government, but but for officials, and, and that opens up so many conversations. Uh, which I, which I do a lot of on RVD TV and on RVD radio, is look at the government's position on things and then go behind it and figure out, you know, what what is what is the basis for their position. You know, I mean, uh, it's no secret I'm an advocate for marijuana, and, and people like to, and by the way, 
um, while Sonia has been going through chemotherapy, that the marijuana has been a tremendous aid in helping uh, helping keep her from uh, having loss of appetite, discomfort, um, nausea, loss of sleep. I mean, the, the marijuana is such an aid for chemotherapy patients, but most people going through chemo won't even try it. Why? Because they were taught that marijuana is dangerous and that it's a bad drug. All bullshit, all bullshit. And the fact is, if nobody has ever, ever overdosed from marijuana, ever, there's not one reported case, it's not toxic enough to overdose from, then why is it that the government can tell you that it's like the number one most dangerous, most addictive drug? It's all bullshit and it's all based on money. Well, that was what, that's really what got me started into, re, into really looking into the government was, wait a second, they can deprive all these people from having a better quality of life just to try to make more money off of pharmaceutical drugs? That is, is the epitome of evil. It's fucking evil. It's bullshit. Let me ask you, and people don't want to know. People, well, okay, you say that, Rob, but I don't know. Okay, you don't want to do the the research yourself. Let me ask you this, because everybody knows this. What's the number one drug in America that kills more than anybody else? Cigarettes. Excuse Cigarettes me. kill over 450,000 Americans a year. Yep. That's incredible. I saw the movie Bigger, Stronger, Faster when they were talking about after the Benoit tragedy, all the news everywhere about steroids. Oh, steroids, it's an epidemic. It's, it's going, it's crazy, it's out of control. There's CNN reports and everything. So they did the research, and guess how many people uh, died from a reported steroid usage last year? Three. 